James 4, 13 to 17, Scripture looks at playing God over our own lives, how we take the place of God in ourselves and how we live as a, in a way that we are God. You see, the objective of this game is to imagine ourselves as a final authority over our own lives. That's what we look at. We look and say, well, God may have some input, but I'm the final authority. But to make matters worse, not only is that what we think but and what we may uh, want to ponder about, but it's actually what we do. <laughs> we live our lives uh, according to that. We may assign God's sovereignty over certain tasks, keeping our own daily routine to ourselves. We say that God doesn't have any control over our daily activities. Our daily activities, I can handle those. I don't need to ask God about those particular matters. Those are things that I can do. And if I can do them, then I don't need to ask God for what he wants to do in those areas. You see, God can handle things like religion. When it comes to my religion, and things along those matters, yeah, I will relinquish those to God. Or maybe even our moral ethics, um, moral matters. We will let God handle moral matters, or even matters uh, that deal with questions of our faith. You see, in all of those, we allow God to take control of those, and we'll seek his wisdom and his knowledge in those areas. You see, that's his realm. That's God's realm. But we can handle things like our finances. I don't need God to tell me how to spend my money. I know how to do that, and I will do a good job of doing that. And when it comes to relationships, I know a good relationship from a bad relationship I don't need to bother God about my relationships. I can handle that. Or what about business decisions? Oh, I, I can handle my own business. Um, I, I don't need God to interfere in, in my business. You see, and there's other areas that are, are just the same as these. You see, at the core of this false philosophy is the idea that we're the masters of our own destiny, that we can have the final answer in those areas of our lives on how to do those things and what we need to do and how we need to go about living those in our daily lives. You see, William Ernest Hurley's poem, Invictus, includes these words. It says, it matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. <laughs> it's kind of the way that a lot of people view their lives, that a lot of Christians, I can handle my own life. I don't need God's interference in those areas. You see, that's the philosophy of us when we play God in our lives. We see that in verse 13 of uh, James chapter 4. James chapter 4, verse 13, tells us how playing God looks like in our lives. Let me read verse 13. It says, Come now, you who say, Today or tomorrow, we will go to such and such a city and spend a year there and engage in business and make a profit. You see, it starts out today or tomorrow. In other words, it's saying, I'm going to set my own schedule. God doesn't need to set my schedule. I'm fully aware of what I need to do and when I need to do it. So I will set my own schedule. And then it goes on to say, we will go to such and such a city, which means that we will set our own path for our life. 
what we need to do in, in our lives is the path that we take, I will set that path. And it goes on to say, and spend a year there. And that just says that I'm going to place my own limits on my life, on how long I do something, how short I do it. And it says, and engage in business. In other words, I can handle my own activities. I don't need God to interfere and to tell me the activities that I need to be involved with. I don't need to bother God with things like that. Those are things that I can handle. And it says, and make a profit. Predict our own outcome. That is what I can do. I, I can predict my own outcome with those type of uh, areas of my life. I don't need God's help in those areas. You see, really notice that none of these activities describe anything negative in and of themselves. There's nothing really negative in any of those things. But you see, all of these describe the everyday affairs of just normal life of a normal individual would describe their daily activities. But see, that's exactly the point that scripture's trying, that scripture is making. It's saying because God is sovereign Lord, we must consider his will in every aspect of our lives. If God is Lord over our lives, if he is the ruler of our lives, that we need to have him let and take control over our whole life, not just some parts of our life. He needs to manage everything. Nothing is too big or small for God to handle. You see, in this verse, we see our problem with a go it alone attitude toward life. Did you notice all the way through that verse, it was, I will do this. I will do that. <laughs> that is the problem. It is saying that I will do these things, that I will be the one to do them, not letting God have his say-so in it, not even asking for God's direction or his wisdom in these areas. But this is what I'm going to do. All the emphasis is on me. You see, as mere mortal humans, we have no idea what the future will bring to us. We have no idea what our future holds in our lives in any capacity. You see, we do not know what will happen today. We, we don't know the activities of even later on today and uh, much less a, a year or two from now. So we don't know that, but God does. You see, we can live to be in our 90s. Oh, we could die tonight. We could die even looking at this message. We don't know our future. You see, nobody knows. Nobody knows the future except one. <laughs> Only God knows. God knows the future. God knows our future. And because of that, we can put our trust in him. You see, playing God has no assurance for us. We see that in verse 14 of chapter 4 is that uh, plain God has no assurance for us. Look at verse 14. Yet you do not know what your life will be like tomorrow. You are just a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. Wow. You see, Yes, playing God with our own lives is risky because we have no assurance of a long life. We would like to live a long life. And people that are older realize that maybe their life could end at any point. It's someone that is a young person, a teenager or a young adult that may not realize the shortness of life. My wife plays the bagpipes, and sometimes she'll come back and she'll say, wow, the young man or young woman that I played for 
was just a young person, a teenager or in their 20s. There is no guarantee uh, of what the future holds, if our future will even be on this earth. You see, Scripture describes our lives as a vapor that appears, appears suddenly, but then dissipates quickly. It, it just it, It's just a mere breath and then totally gone. And that is a great, great illustration. And it doesn't even begin to describe the, the smallness, though, of our life when we consider eternity. And we, we'll spend, spend eternity somewhere, either in heaven or in hell. In heaven, we will have pure joy and love and goodness. And in hell will be misery and pain and punishment. If you have never accepted Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, then your destiny is hell. And I would ask you right now just to bow your head and say, Lord Jesus, come in my life. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me by your pure blood on the cross, your sinless blood. Wash away my sins and cleanse me. Come in my life. Take control of my life. And let me live for you from now on. Amen. And then you will be in heaven. You see, we need to imagine yourself outside in the middle of winter. when It's about 20 degrees outside. It's cold. And if you live in an area that's even colder, even better. But you see, you're bundled in a thick coat. you got gloves on and a warm cap on. And as you exhale, what happens? You see a puff of vapor, and then it's completely gone in just a moment's notice. You know what? That's life for the old as well as for the young, and it happens fast. Before you know it, time is gone. Just look at your life right now. Look at things that happened six months ago, a year ago. They just seem like they happened a short time ago. And so life goes on. It's short. You see, about the time that your face clears up, your mind gets foggy. <laughs> That's just about the way that life really is. Then scripture goes on and it says that God controls our whole life. That every bit of our life is what God controls. We see that in verse 15. It says, Instead, you ought to say, If the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. See, here we see that we have no right to ignore God's will in any aspect of our life. God has control of all our life, not just parts of it, but for all of it. And, and for many Christians, um, they say that I'll do this with God's will. In other words, if it's God's will, I will let it happen. And if it isn't, I won't. But you see, for many Christians, those two words, God will has become nothing but a cliche. They want to do what they want. They, they're going to do what they want. And they will tell other Christians, well, if it's God's will, I'll do this. If it's God's will, I'll do that. All the time, they've never even addressed that issue to the Lord. Ask Jesus, Lord, is this your will for my life? Should, you, should I do this or should I not do this? And ask for wisdom and guidance and, and direction in their life. They haven't done that, but they will tell people, well, I'll do this if God wills. In other words, I guess they think, I'm going to do this. If God doesn't want me to do it, he's going to have to absolutely stop me uh, in some very drastic means. You see, it is something that we attach to our plans to make sure we're not perceived as being proud. That we, we will say that so that others won't say that, well, you're so proud. You say you're going to do this and you're going to do that. 
So instead of thinking that we'll be proud, we just say, well, I'll do this if God wills. Problem is, we never even ask God for his direction in our life. You see, if the Lord will means submitting ourselves humbly before God, we can to submit ourselves humbly before God if we're going to ask if it's his will for something. And he alone is entitled to be the Lord over all things in our lives, not just a few things. You see, we should go before the Lord, and we should say, yes, if the Lord wills, I will do this. But we need to ask him. We need to humbly bow before the Lord and say, Lord, I'm thinking about doing this, or I'm thinking about doing that, or I need to know your direction in my life. Would you show me what you need for me to do? Will you show me that that's the right direction. If, if it is, then let things fall in place for it to happen. And if not, put a complete stop to it, Lord. Don't even let me begin in that direction. You put the stop. You're the Lord. I ask your direction. You see, it means changing our thinking. We have to change the way that we think. We we think that some things are sacred and others are secular. Some things belong to God and, and some don't. Or we might think of them as being heavenly. Some things are heavenly minded and other things are earthly minded. Or we might even think of them as, oh, this is something that is spiritual. And this other thing is something that is physical. You see, this philosophy gives some things to God and some things to us. And God is in control of all things. There, there is no secular. There is no sacred. There is no heavenly, no earthly. There is no spiritual, no physical. It's all God's. You see, God controls all things, even those we consider mundane, even the things that we may consider as not very important. That's not a very important thing for me to consider. But in God's eyes, it is. If you're a child of God, if you're one of his children, no matter what you do, big or small, or anything in between, God's interested in it all. See, God owns it all. He owns it all. So why not go to him for direction? You see, the alternative to submitting all things to God is that we control our own fate. We determine our own fate, but we don't allow ourselves to be controlled by God's will in our lives. Allow God to control all things in our lives. Allow God to be the one that controls the, the big things and the little things. Learn that no matter what you are doing in life, no matter how big it may be or how small it may be, as you look at those things, go to the Lord and say, Lord, you show me what you want me to do. You lead my path. You guide my path. If this is the direction I should go, then let it be smooth and, and let the way be smooth as I go that direction. But Lord, if that is not what you want me to do, then let the way be hard. Let me know that I shouldn't be going this way. And if possible, Lord, just put a total stop sign in the way so that I will know that that is something that I should not enter into. But you might say, how? How can I stop playing God? How can I stop doing that? Well, I'm glad you asked, because <laughs> verse 17 describes that. How to stop playing God? Verse 17, therefore, to one who knows the right thing to do and does not do it, to him it is sin. You see, here scripture points out 
two ways to stop playing God for your life. You follow both of these and God will be God in your life. And you will do God's will whenever you approach anything in life. You will approach it with the way that you know that you should approach it and you won't be playing God. You see, first, you're to know the right thing to do. You're, you're to know what is the right thing. Well, the only way to know the right thing to do is to be a student of the scriptures, of the Holy Bible. That's why it's so important to, to know your Bible. You know it not for information to brag about how much of the Bible you know. You study the Bible so that you know how to live your life. It is a guidebook showing us how to live our life. Sure, it's a guidebook showing us how to get to heaven. Of course, everybody knows that. But it's also a guidebook showing us how to live our daily lives. So the first thing we need to do is to know the right thing to do. What's the second thing? Just to do it. <laughs> first thing, know the right thing to do. Second, do the right thing. That's what we're to to be in the process of implementing in our lives. It is doing what scripture tells us that we need to do. You see, God has a standard of right living that is above our own interest and pursuits. His standard for living is way beyond the earthly standard. And it's his standard that we need to know so that we can live. You see, this happens when we stay close to the Word of God and live our lives according to that wisdom. As we learn the, the scriptures, as we learn what they tell us about the way to live, and as we put those into action, <laughs> we'll be living God's will in our life. If we continue to live as though God isn't concerned in certain areas of our lives, Here's scripture saying that that's sin. God is inter interested in all of our lives. The big things, the small things, the in-between things, nothing too big, nothing too small. You see, that's the point of scripture and the warning in this verse. The plan is simple, but two commands. First, know the right way. We're to know the right way the thing that we are to do, we are to know that. And second, then humbly submit to it. If we do not humbly submit to what we know that we should do, that's what this verse is talking about. Finally, if you know what scripture tells you to do, but you refuse to do it, then this verse, is saying, then that is sin. You're living in sin. If you know the right thing to do and do not do it. So to stop playing God, know the right thing to do and live that right thing in your life. I got some closing thoughts, some truths worth living. The first one, obey God totally. Just whatever you do, Determine that you're going to obey God totally. No matter what he tells you to do, that you're going to follow him. You see, even over the small and the large things, obey God. Obey him in the large things, and that's what we tend to go to him with. But learn to get in the habit of asking God to give you direction, even in those small things in life, so that he will lead, so that he will guide. And he will direct you in what you need to do. Next, we need to see that life is short. <laughs> no matter how you look at it, life is short. And you don't know how much time that you have, depending on whether you're old or young, you don't know how much time you have. So we need to make every day, every moment count for the glory of God. No matter what we're doing, 
We need to make every day count for his glory, for what he would have us to do, doing God's will in our lives. And we next need to realize that God controls all things. He controls every single thing that there is. He controls the sacred as well as the secular, the spiritual as well as the physical. He controls it all. And so go to him and let him show you what you need to do in each of those areas. And then know and do rightly. Know and do rightly. Obey the scriptures. Study the scriptures so that you know the right thing to do. So that you can be obedient to the Lord. You see, God reveals truth in the scriptures for you to obey. That's why it is there as a guidebook showing you how to live your life. So study the scriptures so that you'll know what you need to do to obey and then obey it. Because like James chapter four, verse 17 said, if you know that the right thing to do and do not do it, then it is sin. We live in sin, but we do not live according to the scriptures that we know that we should live by. So let's bow our words uh, in prayer and um, seek his guidance. Father, as we come to you, we ask, Lord, that we would make you Lord of our life in all areas, the big and the small, and let us be in the habit of coming to you often, not just once a day during devotions or just when we're in church. Let us learn to come to you every moment of the day so that we will be able to not only know what we should do, but then help us to do it. Help us to practice it. Help us to put the word of God into practice in our daily lives. We thank you for what you're doing in our lives. We thank you for being with us in this message today. Help us now to live it in Christ's name. Amen. Well, thank you for listening to this message today. And I will see you again next Tuesday for another message. Have a great week.